and I can bring on stage. Let's see if my magic works. There she is. There she is. Okay, let me properly introduce her. But first of all, I'd like to say that although she's been living in the US for a long time, she's a fellow European. She's from originally from Denmark, as I am from Italy. So the Danes were terrorizing Europe for a very long time, but also they were bringing their culture in many, many places. And if you think of England and then even the English language, there are so many elements from the Danish language which are the base of the way we communicate today. So I think that Rene will be able to tell you many interesting things. Uh, Rene, I'm talking about Rene Kamstra. Uh, she's the president of Win in Communication and the Rene Kamstra LLC. She's a, an acclaimed international speaker, one of the world's top speakers and business coaches focusing on personal development, corporate growth, and leadership for entrepreneurs and corporate executives. Her philosophy, which I like very much, is it takes 80% mindset and 20% strategy to get into the top 1%. She's an expert in mindset, communication, and business growth. And the title of her speech is Turn Your Customer into a Long-Term Client. Welcome, Renee. And as we say here, you are free. Thank you. I'm truly very, very honored to be here. And I'm so excited to talk to all of you guys. So I am going to tell you guys all about how to keep your clients, how to talk to them in a way where they will just not want to get rid of you, but actually get you a lot more work. So let me share my screen with you so that you guys All right. I am going to share it. All right. I hope Renee, you can see my screen. Renee, you're having a bit of a feedback. Uh, oh, no, I don't know how to stop that. Uh, maybe you can uh, uh, lower can down the volume. Like this now? Um, the volume, I think, uh, would help. Uh, okay. Is it better now? Yes, I think it's better now. Okay, good. And can you see my screen or no? Are you able to see my screen? No, we're not. Uh, can you share it again? Yep, let me try it again. My, my volume is at 28. Yeah, maybe there's a, maybe you can uh, put your mic a bit uh, because uh, the, the sound. All right, you know what? Hold a minute and I'm going to get some headset. Maybe that'll work better. Okay. So talk a little bit, okay? Okay, no problem. Well, we're always ready to step in. Always <laughs> ready. This happens. This happens when you work um, uh, from long distance. So Renee, I think uh, she's in the States right now, and it's kind of late also in the States as well. Uh, it's in right now, I think. But uh, I, I think we're going to be very interested in what she has to say. She, she has a lot of experience, and I've been perusing a little bit on the Internet about her. And... Uh, she she really is able to get through and to be able to deliver her message uh, online. I've seen several videos. Uh, let's mute her mic for the time being. All right. And um, maybe, Celia, you can work in the back for the time being. And I am back here. So until Rene is ready, maybe you can wave to me, Rene, whenever you're ready. And I'll be glad to give you the floor again. Maybe this time you will be free to start. Uh, let's see if Renee is ready. Okay. There you go. Renee? Uh, yep. Do you see me? I see you and I can hear you. I think if you're able to share okay. the screen at that point, I just can do the video and listen to you. Um, okay. Let me try it again. All right. Let me... Is it uh, that my that my screen share? That my screen share? Unfortunately, not. I still don't okay. see. It. That's so 
But I will keep you company in the meanwhile, so you can concentrate on the task at hand. And uh, I will try and help you out through this. But technically speaking, uh, it's on your side. So we can only help you out once we see your screen on. And I see many more people also that are joining us. Uh, there's somebody from uh, Calahuan City in the Philippines. So are you ready? No. I'm a businesswoman from my experience being one 24-7 job. What can you say about my position? Well, we, will, we can help you a lot. Uh, we, there will be many speakers that have been able to tell you more about uh, your challenges. Uh, are you ready? Rene, not yet. Okay, I will put you back again on the background so you have more, more liberty to work out your technical problems. And I will call back Celia on stage. So Celia, there you go. Uh, when things like this happen at work, and especially in the Philippines, sometimes we have problems with reliability of the Wi-Fi. What do we do? What is the creativity of an entrepreneur? Well, How for for us, uh, because uh, we know what we, we need to talk about, but because uh, for Renee, this is very technical, I think. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, to, to share also from our side her screen because she sent it here. And uh, maybe I can share it. So uh, let me check uh, if I can share the screen of Renee. Uh, I'll put it on the other other window. Okay. While you do that, I will be talking to Renee. Then it's okay. goodbye, Celia, and welcome again, Renee. Improvisation is a big part of being a host, but also is a part of being an entrepreneur. What is your experience about that, Renee? Uh, how much planning uh, is important vis-a-vis uh, -vis a little bit of improvisation when things change all of a sudden? I'm sorry, you're mute. We really are unhappy, uh, unfortunately, this morning. I can unmute your mouth. Oh, there you go. No? Uh, okay, you can speak. About? Improvising. About improvising when things don't work out. Because, of course, you said planning is very important as an entrepreneur. But sometimes, no matter how much you plan, things don't go the way you want to. Really? And, and isn't that life? Isn't that why we are doing what we're doing? <laughs> it is part. It is part of the fun. It is part of the process. But also you can put a lot of attention when you have responsibilities towards others and you have your own company. Okay. So to me, it's so... You can go on. You're on. I'm hearing you talk in my ear, but it's not what it is. Well, I'm really sorry about that. How about you start? Can you start without your slides? Because we hear you. We hear you. Okay. I hear myself, but I hear things that I said about five minutes ago. So hopefully now it's live. Okay. Perfect. So... Obviously, what happens is when there's something new, it is really important just to... Sure, I can start without my slides. Um, I can actually look at my slides, but what I, will, what I will start with is really... Okay, perfect. So what is really important? Um, I hear... I'm still hearing things from five minutes ago. I'm not sure what to... So I wish I could talk without hearing other things that I said before, but hey guys, I'm just going to I'm just going to talk. Do you hear a double or triple talk? Because that is what is happening. Sounds just good? Okay. Then okay. So what I'm going to teach you guys is the following. Whatever happens, it is incredibly important in order for you to just do what needs to get done, right? And so in this case, honestly, 
I am literally hearing myself talk and I hear things from previous time and I'm hearing and I'm seeing my name go. So I'm just going to go for. So let me say one thing. When you want to actually get people and you want to work for them, what you want to do is you want to get totally ready. You want to get into the mindset to get stuff done, to get whatever you need to do. So my first slide, if you would have seen it, is literally somebody who is standing with chips. And it is chips like video chips, right? And chips from a casino. Because what you do not want to do is you do not want people to come there and not know what's going on. So if you interview, for instance, what you need to do you need to you need to pretty much um, look at everything and let's see if we can now share the screen because maybe it was because um, I was I was having my Facebook on. So can you guys see this right now? Unfortunately, no. no. Okay. All right, so it looks like I'm going to do my whole talk without slides, and that's okay. I'm then going to put my slides in front of me, but then you might not be able to see me, or will you see me? Can you still see me? I guess not. Hi, Renee. I see we're, we're on the broadcast. We have your turn your customer into a long-term client. So you can, you can see that now? Yeah, um, I'll be helping you with your slides. Uh, just uh, let me know if I need to, to go out or, 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 or turn my uh, the slide again, but uh, it's okay. here. All okay. right, so this is just my introduction slide, guys. So finally, we can actually start. So let's go to the next slide, please. The next slide is showing you exactly what I was just trying to tell you. You know, most people, what they do is they are gambling with their clients because A, they do not know their clients, right? They don't know what their clients are standing for. They don't know what they really want to give to the clients. And so let's go to the next slide. There are certain keys on how you can be seen as the best in your field. And one of those keys will be in our next slide. You need to set yourself up for success. So how do you set yourself up for success, guys? A, next slide, you wanna make sure that you narrow down your niche and you choose jobs that are using your genius. So let me tell you what I mean when I say that. If you literally put yourself down on a place like Upwork, right? And you say on Upwork, I can do 1500 different things, right? And I am looking for somebody who is a, a person who can work for me from home, or I'm a company. I'm going to think, okay, this is probably somebody that knows a lot of things, but might not be a master of something. So I will really ask you to nar narrow it down and really follow your genius. So let's say you are really good at editing, right? And you're very creative. What you want to do is you want to make a page. You want to show people some of the work that you've done. And you want to really elaborate on those skills because, frankly, if I am looking for a good editor, that's what I'm going to look for. I'm going to see, okay, what has this person done? Does it look like there's a smooth transition, right? And maybe you don't know what your genius is. Maybe you are a shy person, but you just don't know. I will really ask you, go online and ask all your friends, what do you think I am good at? What do you see in me? What have you seen from my jobs or whatever that you think I would be really great at? Because probably they know your genius, because guess what? 
your genius is something that feels so natural to you. So somebody like myself, right? I love, I love to serve people. I love to teach. I love to make a difference. In fact, that's my number one um, value in my company is to make a difference. So what do you think I'm great at is what I'm doing now? What do you think I suck at? Obviously, computer stuff, right? I mean, I couldn't even get my own slides up to share the screen. I don't know why, but hey, this happens. So thank you that there's people like Celia that actually can help me with this, right? So choose your genius and get other people to do the rest, all right? So we'll go to the next slide. It's really important to do research and know everything, or at least I'm saying everything, but obviously we cannot know everything, right? Things change a lot. But it's really important to know a lot about your topic. It is also really important when you have a client that talks to you, that you really listen and hear what they have to say. And before you ask questions, that you just really go with a fine tooth and, and look at what are the topics or the points that they are making, right? Because they need to see what your genius is. They need to see that you will try first before you come back, right? That's really important. So I'm going to go to the next slide. And so one of the things that you do not know about me, or there might be many things, right, is that I actually sang in the Vatican and I speak a lot of languages. But the reason that I put this slide here is not to brag with you, with you guys, but I want to tell you something very specific. If you look on the one side of the screen, you will see that I played a prostitute in a movie that got me into IMDb. Now, that sounds really crazy. Why will I want to put down that I played a prostitute? Well, I'll tell you exactly why. Because I'm one of those people who believe you do whatever it takes, okay? And so I found out that Apple Computers was going to do their first movie and that they planned to actually bring out a screen screening a mechanism, right? And I knew that there was a lot of companies that did not like that at all. So I always wanted to work with Apple as a company. And I had to make a plan because I just couldn't just go into the door and say hello. But when I heard that they were going to do a movie, I took six months off and I actually went to New York City in order to see if I couldn't do something behind the scenes to work on that Apple movie. So when I came there, I told them I'm a communications expert and I would love to work on your movie. And they looked at me and they're like, why would we wanna have a communications expert? And I'm like, you will need me. I promise you, give me a chance, you will need me. So for some reason I showed up, I had confidence. I just knew I had to be there, right? And what happened? They hired me. They said, okay, we'll hire you. You're going to do behind the scenes work, but we also want you to play a prostitute. I'm like, okay. And so what happened was that the person who was actually in charge of the movie, right? He was somebody who was one of five people that actually worked in the boardroom of Apple computers. And so I was so happy that I could work there. And so what I did is I immediately started befriending him, befriending everybody else, had a fantastic time. And then guess what happened? Once the movie was made, that was when Apple made those big announcements. And by that time, they knew that I've already worked with a lot of companies. I've worked with Summit Entertainment. I've worked with Lion's King. I've worked with MGM, a lot of these bigger movie companies. 
And that is when I could really bring my skill set and my genius, right? So I helped them negotiate the deal. So it's really important for you to understand it might not look the way you think it will look, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't go for it when your heart tells you to go for it. So let's go to the next slide. I am going to give you guys communication and tips that will totally give you a triple advantage. And this is for people who, when you are talking in person with your clients, but also for marketing, all right? So let's go to the next slide. The first thing in communication, guys, is it's always a two-way street. So the first thing you need to do is be an incredibly good listener. Because if you're not a listener, honestly, there's no way you're going to go anywhere. So in talking, obviously, you have to ask a lot of questions, you have to build rapport, and you have to learn their needs. But let me give you the 30-second rapport building secret. I can tell you it works every time. So let me show you what not to do. Hi, my name is Renee, and I am here, and I'm so happy to meet you. Okay? Or... Let me show you what to do. Hi, my name is Renee, and I'm so happy to meet you. So I would love for you guys to tell me what do you think is the difference? Send it over. Let, let us know. You know, just give us some answers because it's really important that we have engagement. That's exactly what communication is. All right. So I hope you guys send me some love and say, yes, I understand the difference. So the difference is, guys, do you see my eyebrows? If you raise your eyebrows and you look at somebody, doesn't it look like I'm really a lot more interested in you if I do this versus hello, right? Big difference. Obviously, the smile, right? It gives energy so energy is important so if you are online and you do marketing can you get the same thing yes you can you can write in small letters you can accentuate with highlights if you want to do capital letters right and the other thing that you can do is obviously emojis right how can you listen to your client ask questions know what it is that they need and want next slide please then no matter what they say, whether you like it or not, make sure you acknowledge first. You can say something like, I have your back. Absolutely, indeed, sure, right? Acknowledge what they say. Because unless you acknowledge what they say, even if you don't necessarily agree, they will not be open to listen more to you, all right? Next slide. You also need to bring validation because validation and references and testimonials will give you credibility. So if I would interview somebody who does online working, again, remember what I said to you, if you would have video, edit, video editing or whatever on your um, thing, I would like to see some of them, right? I would like to see whether you got some five, or testimonials or references. Are you working right now? Is there somebody I could call? Is there any proof? So, especially today, it's important. I cannot tell you uh, that I have never been online for anybody that I actually have working for me because that's not true. I always go online, I research them. So, it's important for you to also get research. Does that make sense? Make sure you know exactly what your um, people want and who they are, what is their company. Can we go to the next slide, please? So, to communicate, it is really important that you actually know who are you dealing with. So, it's not just important to know 
the culture because cultures are different guys if you work with an american culture you know and they are telling you something they learned in order for them to actually tell you what you didn't do well they should always first tell you what you did do well and maybe they have to tell you two or three things that you did do very well and only then will they tell you what you're not doing well and it's important to know because it's the total opposite from people that are um many times in russia right or in australia they will just tell it to you as it is and so you might think oh wow i did great because i got three compliments and only one thing that was not good i'm telling you it's important to understand culture so if you interview for somebody or you actually write or work online make sure you know the culture of that destination like in europe i'm originally from holland we are like we cut like a knife we just say it as it is and it's important to know that it's the same with personality types so i'm going to show you different personalities i would love for you to eventually tell us what is your personality because i it would be great if we can play this game together okay so the next slide is telling us homer simpson is that direct person actually like me right i don't mind to get in a confrontation because i like to say it as it is i always know what i want i speak my mind and i'm impulsive i want to take action so um, i'm very competitive and do not take advantage of me because i'm very results oriented right i'm looking at goals and i want to use my time wisely i'm always in a leadership role because authority is my middle name i would almost say right and so it's always about the bottom line now very interesting if you look at the next slide when you deal with somebody that is like myself or which is a very dominant and direct personality it doesn't mean that they are trying to be mean we just want to get very specific very brief go to the point and then no one thing you need to answer the what question so if you are going to be an online marketer and you want to market to somebody that is this dominant personality you want to do it in bullet points you want to say what is it that you are bringing to the table and what can it solve i'm telling you if i look at something within 30 seconds i know if i'm going to buy i'm not even going to read through everything i might see if there's some good testimonials but that's it i am what they call the low hanging fruit of anybody who wants to buy and so always remember with somebody that is direct or if you market market for us first by a few bullet points make sure you answer the what make sure you let people know what the result is or how you're going to solve a problem or what it is that it would solve for them and that's it right even if you are somebody who talks a lot if you really have some point to make for somebody like me you can just put a chart right and the chart if i see you know this is 25% and this is 50% and this is 75% that's going to tell me all the results that i need to know and so you do not have to give me a lot of information but have it ready because if i want to know more and i ask you you better not tell me that you don't have it so it doesn't mean that i don't want you to research it okay and so it's very important so how are you going to know somebody is dominant well you can hear i'm pretty direct right you can see i'm sitting up straight and i look you in the eyes that's really really important for somebody 
that has a dominant personality is looking in the eyes, okay? So I'm going to go to the next slide because this is important. When you work with somebody that's dominant, it's important that you know or make them feel that they are in charge. Even if you did all the work, you will say something like, you are in charge and I have all the confidence in you. You know, you have complete authority to make it happen. You know, what do you need so that we can move ahead? Because normally somebody who is in charge like that is very good in speaking. They can many times just boil it down from a big thing to small. And the leadership is very critical to them. So even if you have a team, right? Because many of you actually have teams. Look for those people who are dominant because you always want to make them feel like they have the opportunity to become a leader. And many of them will be absolutely amazing at sales, right? They are task first many times, but they can switch just like this and they will come up with solutions and want to grow your company. So it's important. It's okay if they don't always agree with you because they want to go up in your company. So remember that. So if you are a dominant personality and you will know if you are, please let us know. We would love to know this. Okay. So let's go to the next one. The next one is bored. Oh, this is the extrovert, the person who loves to have fun, right? He's so energetic. He's this fun personality that just wants to play in a way, right? He is our ultimate person when it comes to customer service because guess what? He is so influential. People love him. You know, it's not necessarily somebody who wants to excel academically, but it doesn't mean he's not clever. He's very clever. He's very colorful. So if we would make him an ice cream, he's going to be the vanilla with all the rainbow colors, and then you have all the sprinkles on top, and then you still have a cherry on top and maybe even a straw coming out that has chocolate. Because... He is just so colorful and can sometimes be totally over the top, right? And if he's over the top, sometimes if you are a personality that is slower and need to think a little bit, that can become a little much for you. So I need for you guys to know if there's somebody like that in your team, that all you need to do is give them some attention. Let them feel like they're doing something great and speak to them a little bit because they need that. If they don't have um, time with people, it's almost like they wilt. So even if you, if you work at home and you have this beautiful, enjoying personality, make sure that you get attention and that you go outside and talk to people. Because if you don't, it doesn't work. So I can tell you, um, I worked with a bigger company. In fact, it was Visa. And Visa called me in to come and look. And one of the problems that they had is they had a tremendous turnover in the customer service department. So when I went in there, and this was in three continents, by the way. So when I went in there, the first thing I saw was all these little cubicles where everybody was totally alone. There was no lounge whatsoever. So nobody could talk. And they expected them to give great customer service. These are people that need to talk, want to talk, right? But they didn't give them that. So when we changed all of that around, and I also made sure that the managers went to speak to them, that's when everything changed and they didn't lose anybody. So understand that. So the next slide. When you deal with somebody like Bart, you need to answer the who question. So who is going to take the next step? Who is going to come up with the best ideas, right? Allow them socializing, just like I was saying. 
and help them to turn their talk into action. Because guys, let me tell you something. For them, talk is their work. And so if you can get them to turn the talk into action, then you have an amazing worker. And if you have the combination, because we are not just one track minded, we're not just one person, right? We have more than one trade. So if you have somebody who is dominant and still have a lot of this extrovert personality, oh boy, you will have an amazing person online. And I'm sure there's many of you. And that's why you are so good at doing online work, right? And maybe even online sales and doing marketing. So it's important for those people to let them know, for instance, if you do marketing, how this is going to bring them up in the social world, right? Because they love to hear these things. So let's go to the next slide. So in this one, you know, we can look at, okay, I would like you to have this on your team, or we are looking for somebody that is energetic and enthusiastic, just like you. So we're looking for somebody who has a positive attitude and outlook, right? So we're going to go to the next slide. Now, Marge Simpson. I would almost call even the Philippines as a country we could almost call the March Simpson country because it is this devoted person who is steady, consistent, trustworthy, hardworking, does not like conflicts, right? And she always sees the good in people and do not want to take risks. Um, she likes to be needed and she is so supportive family oriented, you know, good with friendships, good with relationships. It's one of the reasons why I love to come to the Philippines. I always see how close all the families are. And in fact, I have a team in the Philippines and we feel like family. They are my family, right? And so that is who March is, extremely supportive. And so I'm going to go to the next slide. When you work with a march or you actually even market to a march, you want to be agreeable, non-threatening, and very sincere. And you want to always answer the how question. So how are you seeing them doing this? You know, so um, if you work with them, it's important to tell them exactly what you see happening and what the steps would be because as soon as they understand they will do better can you also see i'm talking slower right because marsh because she's a s we call it an s is slower she needs to think longer it will literally penetrate her brain and she has to then just think it over what is very interesting is, I told you guys, when you talk to the D or the direct personality, you have to look in the eyes, right? When two Ds would sit together, they're going to even lean in, just like I'm looking at you like, wow, right? When I am sitting with a march, it's the total opposite. You will lean back a little bit more. You will not look in their eyes all the time. You will look a little bit away because it is important to them to, you know, not have this all the time because guess what? If you do this with them all the time, they will not trust you. If you don't look like this all the time with a direct person or a critical person, they will not like you or trust you. So do you see? Here you have different personalities, and each one of them have a different way. So it's important if you see somebody lean back, that is a little bit slower, that really does not like conflict, 
it is important to allow yourself, like I'm now not totally looking into the screen, right? Just to look back a little bit, maybe sit back a little bit and just be okay with it, okay? So I'm going to go to the next slide. When you actually work with somebody like this, or even when you write copy, right? It is important to know that it's always important to talk about inclusiveness. So thank you for helping me. When we work together, we can help each other. We can serve the world. It's all about doing things together, making it together as a contribution. Talking about their children is really important, right? It is really important for them to really feel included. Now, I'll tell you something very interesting about this personality. That is, if I would say, well, guys, le um, let's all just go to uh, a restaurant tonight. We're all going to have Korean. I will pay, right? Most people would take that as, okay, I said it in a group. I invited the whole group. The S personality actually would not think that. They would think, wow, Renee didn't ask me, so I don't think I'm invited. And they will actually go home and then feel extremely sad. And so it is important to reach out and specifically invite them. And so think about that when you write copy. Or even when you are in a big, big um, auditorium. It's very interesting. When you're in an auditorium, your first group of people that is right in front or very close to the door is your direct people. So they will be there because either they will sit right in front where somebody is lecturing or close to the door because if they don't like it, I'm out of here. Right. So um, it's important to know with these people who is our S and the supportive people, they're going to be there and they're going to sit close to the middle. And what they're going to do is they're going to be there whether they like it or not, because they are going to be so supportive of you if they said they would. So I love that. And guess what? These are the only people in all personalities that can actually change the mind of a very dominant person without even know, without the dominant person even knowing that they change their minds because they will do it in such a way that they don't have to take the credit. The dominant person can get the credit, but they can manipulate them to get exactly what they want. So know that it's a great trade. Now, the last personality that I'm going to share is the next slide, and it's Lisa. So, But before I'm even going to tell you about Lisa, let me know if you're one of those personalities, right? And give me some love. The more love I get, the more hearts and likes and yeses, you know, the, the, the happier I get when I share, okay? So Lisa is the perfectionist. So for me, who is dominant and not great with all kinds of organizational skills, she is one of those people that I need in my company. Without her, my company would not exist, right? And so I hire for that. I will literally put an advertisement. I need somebody that is incredibly organized, incredibly disciplined, very good at analytical skills because they are the people that can make everything turn, right? They're organized and all of that. But now what is very important if you work with them is to know that they do not like criticism because they are so trying to be perfect with everything that they do that they put a great deal of pressure on themselves. And so if we put more pressure on them or we really, you know, test their integrity or validation, they're going to feel incredibly bad. So try and keep that at a minimum because, frankly, they do it much more than you could even do it.
Okay, so as long as they know what you are expecting, you can pretty much know that they're going to do it because they're very correct and they know how to put systems in place. So I'm going to go to the next slide. So if you sell to somebody like Elisa, and when you do copy or anything like that, this is where it changes for you. So the beginning is going to be the bullet points, right? For people that just wants it quickly, right? But here you want to make sure you have the pros and the cons and the balance sheet and all the specific things. You also want to give them links because I'm telling you, they are going to research. So they will always ask the why question. Be super clear and don't just pull data from, I don't know, the air. Make sure the data is totally accurate and eliminate surprises. They hate surprises, right? Show them how they can fit in and review your thoughts with them very clearly. So when I work with them and I know that they're going to go into a specific role, I will always give them even a course that they can go through the whole course. They know exactly what's going to happen. You know, what part would be mine or somebody else's, what part would be theirs and so on. But the same is when you sell. When you're going to sell, these are the people that if you give them the link, they're not going to do it immediately. They're going to research you. If you're doing a high price item, they're going to research or they're going to tell you, I am going to sleep on it. Well, with all the other people in these groups that I gave you, when they say I'm going to sleep on it, it is most of the times just to get away and not having to tell you in your face, no, thank you. When Lisa, who is very, very detailed, tells you that, she means it. So how are you going to know it's uh, Lisa or somebody who's detailed? They most likely go to take notes all the time. So you can bet on it if they take notes that it's most likely a Lisa, okay? They're going to ask for more clarification. So they will not just accept a task as is. They will always ask for clarification. So for you, when you... When you work with a boss who is maybe in any part of the world, if you see that this person is giving you long emails with a lot of detail, know that it is like a Lisa Simpson, right? And that um, you might have to pull out of that the bullet points of what they mean, right? And because in their mind, they've given you so much, but for many personalities, that can be overwhelming. So just take it point by point and just pull out the bullet points first. And then when you do the work for them, then go back to the point to make sure you have everything that they asked for, because they will see every last detail. And if you don't do it correctly, then you're not going to keep your role, right? So do you now understand why I told you, work in your genius. If you work in your genius, it doesn't ma matter. Is it somebody that is dominant or is it somebody that is very detailed? Whatever it is, you're going to be able to do it well. And don't think because you have only that small genius that you are putting down that you're not going to get a job because when you do it, your job is going to be consistently exactly that that you love so much. So we go to the next slide, which will just tell us, you know, about the research and um, uh, things that you have to look for so that you know you are prepared for them again. Prepare always, okay? Next slide. I cannot even tell you. This is probably the most important point. It is serve. Always, always over deliver. Because if you over deliver, it's not just you. I'm telling you, 
in my whole life, right? I have probably never had to look for work because I am always getting people that refer me. And why is that? Because they know they can count on me and I will always do more than what they would expect. And so that, guys, if you could do that, over deliver, not complain, then it is going to be what will set you apart from everybody else. And so I'm going to the next slide because we're going to look at steps to gain confidence. Now, that is something that I know a lot of people are asking me always. How can I be confident? So the first thing is to gain confidence, you need to trust yourself. So how can you trust yourself? Well, if you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, can you trust yourself? So give me that answer. If you say you're doing something and you don't do it, write down for me right below. Just tell me, are you one of those people? Because then you need to gain confidence and it's time for you to step up your game. Trust yourself because trust needs to get earned, right? It's not something that you can just give away because you have to earn it. And it's the, it is the easiest to lose because if you don't do what you say, people are going to lose their confidence, right? And so one of the ways and this is the next slide that you can really get confidence is by doing the power pose. There's a study that Harvard University did, and it was all about doing the power pose and then looking if you people who did the power pose before they go for an interview or before they do a good sale or something like that, and people who didn't do it. And frankly, about 80% of people that did the power pose would actually get the job or do the sale. And so I was very interested in that, right? And so what do you do? You stand with your hands on your hips, just like she is standing there, your head a little bit up, almost a 45 degree angle. And then you say things like yourself, I've got this. Uh, you know, I'm going to make such a difference in this person's life when I sell her this product that it would totally change everything for her. So you mentally prepare yourself to win. Okay. You mentally prepare yourself to win. Obviously, you have to love what you do. You have to love a product if it is a sale. And then even if you go for an interview, if you really want to work for a company, then you say, I am so sure I'm the best person for this job. I know what I do so well. Do you now see why I want you to work in your genius? I know what I do so well. I am the best at that. I'm going to make such a difference in this company's life. I'm going to serve them beyond anything that I've ever done. So I just want you guys to think in those terms. Do the power pose. So let's go to the next one. So I'm going to tell you how I work when I am not necessarily in the best frame of mind. So you'll wonder, so what is this slide, right? This is like a butterfly. So I went on an 11-month world tour, guys. And when I went on this world tour and I was in month five, I was in Thailand and one morning I woke up and I was so sad and so down. In fact, I was crying. I felt incredibly lonely. It was the loneliest I've ever felt in my whole life. And so my first reaction was, you know what? I'm just going to buy a ticket and I'm going to go back to go and see my children. But that's in that moment that I was thinking that thought, I came to the realization, no. What I teach all my clients is you never, ever, ever make decisions based on emotion. Okay? So if you're in a very emotional state, 
that's when you don't do it. So what did I do? I set my alarm for 30 minutes and I gave myself time to cry and sulk and lie on my bed. And then after that, I had no choice. I had to get up, had to dress and walk to my favorite cafe to go and eat breakfast. So that's exactly what I did. I was crying when the alarm went. I really didn't want to get up. I mean, the snot was dripping. Sorry, guys, for the words, but it's the truth. I was crying. I looked horrible. I put my clothes on and I walked to this restaurant, which is outside in a garden. And there's these little Thai lady boys, and they didn't know how to handle this woman crying so much, right? But they put me at a table. And as I sat there, I ordered an omelet. And in that moment, this butterfly flew and came to land right next to me. Guess what? Next slide. When my plate came, it flew right into my plate. Next slide. It turned around. Next slide. It literally climbed onto my omelet, guys. And you see, it was a ham and cheese omelet, right? And it looked like it was having the time of its life. It was, it was sucking like nut nectar. But what happened to me is I became extremely enthralled with this butterfly. I, I couldn't even see anything else. I couldn't think anything else. And I became very present. And in that moment, there was something that came over me that was this peace. And I took, obviously, as you know, the cameras and stuff like that. And I wrote on Facebook and I said to people, what do you think was the message for me? And the message that I knew was, you are never alone. Let me just see what time it is so that I'm not going over my time. You are never alone. And so when I knew that and I got like 169 other messages right after that that's when I knew that you know all of us when you even work from home or you work with other people get our times when we are uncertain where things happen but there are ways to go around that even with COVID and everything that's happening right now if we just give in to all our emotions, right, and we totally just listen and buy into the news, we will be in a total different space. But if we decide that, you know, we trust, we trust that there's a reason for everything and that life is for us and not against us, then something good can and will come out of this of any circumstances. And later you'll be saying, wow, I never knew how this could happen. So I would say that this is something that could give you confidence because you will understand what it is. Next slide. Um, these are just a few clients. So I am really ending this conversation with the next slide. And I am just saying, power to all of you guys so i'm so excited and i would love for any of you to ask any questions that you would want to ask thank you thank you Renee. i hope you can hear me and I there's, can absolutely. No, there's no more delay now and it was a, a bumpy ride in the very beginning but such a smooth wonderful fantastic road you paid for everyone. Uh, people got crazy with messages, and I am I am Bart, I am Homer, I am her, and yes, I need more confidence. Really, it was an overwhelming reaction. There are so many comments, so many people enjoyed. Somebody said you remind her of her, one of her best professors in university, and, and there were wow. just a lot of love coming your way. Unfortunately, because of the technical problems we experienced in the beginning, we have no time for further questions. Uh, I, but I think you can tell again where you can be reached because a lot of people want to get back to you. So where can people reach you? 
Um, my name is Renee Kamstra, so it is Renee with one E. You can go to Facebook, you can go to ReneeKamstra.com, and I am so excited to hear from you. And anybody, if you actually write yes down below, um, because you want to have maybe this personality piece that I have, I'm happy to give this to Celia and she can send it to everybody that's asking yes below or saying yes, okay? So thank, thank you, you so, much, so much. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure. And you really connected on a human level with a lot, a lot of people. So from the bottom of uh, a Bart Simpson, thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.